the Dartmouth Apologia, the Association of Christian and Tough Students. I welcome you to the fifth annual Wheelock Conference. <laughs> So to briefly introduce myself, I welcome you as a current art student, a class of 2015, an aspiring engineer, a follower of Christ, and the director of the Lot Conference. This year, we'll look at, at an essential part of being human, making choices. I'd like to start by sharing with you an insight I saw on the margins of Derek Fairbrother's Bible last summer when we were first started thinking about the conference. It says, all of the Bible Indeed, all of human history and human experience is about choice. From Genesis to Revelation, the drama is not of what happens, but what is chosen. All of human experience, all joy, all challenges, all achievement, all suffering, forms but a backdrop, a stage upon which the drama of choice is played out. Often, choices come unexpectedly, and we are unprepared or unwilling. And thus emerges the question, how can we prepare ourselves to make good choices? And how do we even know what is the best choice? Even the faith heroes and heroines of the Bible sometimes struggle to choose. To name just a few, did Noah easily trust God and choose to build the ark? And what resolved Moses to return to Egypt? Or how did Esther choose to go to the king? Daniel and a lion's den, David and a giant? or Jesus in the garden? So how do you make good decisions? What do you consider? What do you ignore? How do you decide when to make a decision? Who do you involve? Where do you look for input? And, and information. But cognitive neuropsychological research shows us that in the end, decisions are made by the emotional centers in the brain, not in the rational ones. You decide first, in your gut and then you explain it. Thus, it's important to ask, how do we prepare ourselves to make good choices so that our gut makes the right choice, and then we can explain it as well? As organizers, we believe that Christianity provides a compelling foundation for answering these questions that we're asking. At Dartmouth, we think about faith and reason and vocation, and how they work together to bring us good choices, and then have the courage to make them. <coughs> Today, we're gathered to learn from one another through the choices and how to live out first things in our lives and vocations each day and in the choices that we make. I've learned from my mentors that decision-making is not just something someone can tell you, but something you have to see and prepare for. Learning is about seeing and doing. So students in the room, we have an exceptional opportunity today to learn from all the incredible mentors around us. Take advantage of it. Turn to the people next to you and ask them questions. Ask them how they've made many of the same decisions that you'll be making today. Challenge yourselves and to answer the question, how do we make those choices? And to live out our response as leaders in the Roman age. Alumni in the room, you are the leaders in business, medicine, law, finance, development. But the most important thing a leader does is to find a mentor and a successor. You have your successors around you in this room. And Dartmouth is different than every other school because of our deep-rooted ethos of paying forwards. Reaching out to the students around you and mentoring them, teach them what you know, challenge them to grow as faithful leaders. <coughs> and faculty and staff in the room. Thank you for all that you do to make Dartmouth the kind of place we can have open discussions and gatherings like this. Much like the respected alumni present here today, I also ask you to reach out to the students and serve as their mentors. Thank you for preparing and engaging us in academic scholarship and vocational development and global citizenship. Today, we brought together alumni from across all sectors of life to talk about what they believe, about how faith integrates with their reason and their vocation. And as you hear their stories, we hope it will raise the question for you, how can I prepare to make the best decisions? 
And so before I welcome our keynote speaker, I have to offer an incredibly special thanks to all the many people who have given so generously of their time. To our keynote speaker and to all of our panelists, thank you for traveling from so far to come here today. To the staff of the Dartmouth Apologia, for all the hard work you do as the center of what we do. To the top school for hosting us here today, and to the LEs of the Ox Society and its board. And to all the students who woke up early this morning to make sure everything was prepared. <laughs> and to the many others who have traveled here today to be part of this conversation that we're having, because it's a really important one. We're immensely grateful for all the time and effort and funds that all of you who have so generously contributed to this today. And so it would have been my honor to welcome the Vice Provost Lindsay Whaley. Um, but unfortunately, he's held up to Sweden for the protest at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, it is my honor to introduce Gary Hagan, our keynote speaker today. Um, he's the founder and president of the International Justice Mission, a global human rights agency that protects the poor from violence by partnering with local authorities and law enforcement to rescue victims bring criminals to justice, restore survivors, and strengthen justice systems. The largest organization of its kind, IJM, has served thousands of survivors of violence. Haugen was the director of the UN investigation in the aftermath of the Rwandan genocide and has been recognized by the U.S. State Department as a trafficking per in persons hero, the highest honor given by the U.S. government for anti-slavery. His work to confront violence against the poor have been featured by Foreign Affairs, The New York Times, The New Yorker, The Times of India, Forbes, U.S. News and World Report, The Guardian, and National Public Radio, and among many other outlets. And he is the author of several books, including The Lotus Effect, published by Oxford University Press earlier this year. In this book, which he co-authored with Victor Bodros, he argues that the fight against global poverty is ultimately unwinnable without dealing with everyday violence and injustice that confronts huge swaths of the world's poor, effectively limiting the choices they make. Now, please help me in welcoming the very beginning. Or a call mocked as a bitter hypocrisy by other 
teenagers betrayed and broken by their parents' sad, bad choices. We all somehow sense the fundamental weight and consequences of choices. For my work, the theme of human choice is a life or death urgency every day. Because the work of the National Justice Mission is a hands-on confrontation with the problem of human violence. Violence is a source of massive, brutal human suffering that uniquely comes from the very intentional, willful choices to physically hurt other human beings. The choice to assault the choice to rape, the choice to enslave, the choice to murder, the choice to torture, the choice to imprison, the choice to rob. This is not a form of human suffering that comes from bad luck, or bad weather, or bad germ, or bad harvest. This is suffering that comes from willful human choices.